This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Unbound once again. Uh, the topic of today's video is that we have now passed, I believe, or close to the two month mark of Need for Speed Unbound being released to the public. And I wanted to do a little bit of a compare and contrast with, you know, Need for Speed Heat. And I've had this just weird feeling that I've, I don't remember watching Need for Speed Heat very closely after launch, but I just get this feeling that I don't think that Need for Speed Unbound has really been that great post-launch. That hasn't seemed like that there's been many updates. There hasn't been many good added features. It doesn't seem like that there are many features that were promised post-launch that have been released yet. And I feel like I'm getting frustrated. I don't know if that is the general consensus among the Unbound community or if this is just something that I might be blowing out of line. So again, here's a little bit of a compare and contrast between Need for Speed Heat about two months after launch and Need for Speed Unbound two months after launch. Now this first one, I will admit, is comparing a little bit of apples to oranges here. Of course, this is discussing the sales of Need for Speed Unbound versus Heat. The big news article headlines that have been released are stating that Unbound, of course this is a UK outlet, has made note that Unbound has performed significantly worse in the fiscal sales department. Of course, this can mean a lot of different things. The market in general is moving away from fiscal sales and more towards digital. So this news outlet has reported that in the UK, fiscal sales are down 64% from heat, which is significant. Again, I feel that a lot of it could just happen to be digital download. That would make sense. But a lot of... I personally feel like that most of it could be contributed to the fact that, first of all, this is now a $70 game versus a $60 game on release. And the digital deluxe bundle or whatever is $80 versus uh, Heat's $70. So a fairly large increase of $10 for a lot of consumers that might you know, start to caution away from making that purchase on release. Moreover, what's interesting is the timing of the release. Most Need for Speed games had been released in about the first two th weeks of November. So, you know, within like November 7th through 14th or 15th or 18th or something like that. And this game had to be delayed a full month until the beginning of December. A little bit of an issue is that it misses out on the Black Friday market completely you had the pre-orders and whatnot but you can't really pick up a pre-order for somebody on black friday for christmas and then give it to them and then it's released before christmas that's just a little bit weird from there after two weeks from release in mid-december already it was reported that need for speed unbound on multiple different retailers had already been marked down for a 40 percent off sale most games, AAA title games from what I can tell, at least six months out, and very definitely at least three months out, do not have sales, period. Especially when you have games that are now in showing that increase of price. You know, developers and, you know, the console makers and, you know, the publishers all want to see that increased revenue so if they're going to have a price hike they don't want to have those sales very early on that being said to see the price hike for the new generation up to 70 dollars and immediately virtually immediately showing a 40 percent off sale is significant 
because it definitely does show that the publisher, you know, EA and the developers Cartoon had seen a huge lack of sales. I would imagine it's due to, like I've said multiple times on the channel before, a lack of marketing. Many people who aren't Need for Speed fans, who are more casual players, didn't even realize the new game was released. And it wasn't until we started screaming from the top of our lungs, hey, there's a new game out, that people are like, oh, shit. Oh, okay. So on the only place that you can find really concurrent numbers of players is from Steam. Oh, wow, this sucks. There we go. <laughs> um, the only place that you can really show how many players are online at any given time is Steam. Unfortunately, Xbox, from what I can tell, doesn't, dis doesn't uh, display that information, nor does PlayStation. So I'm actually going to pull out the graph on this one just to show you guys kind of what I'm seeing too. So again, this is off of Steam, who have only had digital downloads. There isn't, from what I can tell, there isn't such thing as the Steam physical purchase copy of Unbound. So in the past two months, you know, from release, the most amount of people in a 24 hour period is 2,621 people. I want to say that's average and an all time peak of 14,000 people. So that being said, right around release, maybe, you know, pre-order or actually, no, that is release date. It's the second. So that Saturday, 14,000 people were online at one point in time and very quickly tapered off. Again, continuing to compare apples to oranges. If we go to heat, keep in mind, heat was not released on Steam at the very beginning. It was released on Steam a couple of months into it and it's pretty stable. So in all honesty, Need for Speed Unbound is already in this area, which is all of basically 2022 for heat. What's interesting is this point right here. I want to say that Steam had a massive sale. This was about the time that Heat was the free PlayStation game, free monthly game that you could pick up on the PlayStation Store. You just you know hit acquire or download and it's yours. And I want to say Steam had a fairly big sale around that point. I wanted to say it was only like 15 bucks, which is pretty standard. And I'll, I'll have to go back and look and post what it was actually. But at this point of time, you can see it goes up to 50,000, 55,000, and an all time peak at 85,000. Of course, it significantly drops off to 11,000, and then back down to, you know, four to 7,000 here. And just for, just for kicks here, I had actually gone back and seen what play, uh, payback was doing. And it's, not been doing great it's barely broken a grand at a couple of points and then i want to see this is the same sale so there must have been a massive need for speed franchise sale on steam you know peak of twelve thousand people and again this must have been the same thing where they released payback on steam at about the same time as all the other previous need for speed games and just nobody was playing it then so really interesting to see that these are the peaks of those games of course if you do a comparison and contrast uh, again directly with heat actually add payback so if we do a three month kind of graph here unbounds peak is higher than heat and definitely higher than payback but if you go back a year you can just see how big that sale was where it just shot heat into the stratosphere. I guess as of the 30th of January, there's only like a hundred people more on playing Unbound than Heat, which is in my mind, it's very surprising. One of my next points is unfortunately bringing up this set of tweets once again. This is where they shot, shot themselves in the foot. The first update will focus on expanding social play features and future updates will bring new modes, features, cars, customization, content, and more. The first update will bring 
will focus on expansion on oh my god the first update will focus on expanding social play features that's at that point lying because it's not because the 1.1.4 update addressed balancing of the golf gti balancing of the cohen's Gregera, improved the quality of voip for playstation 5 only updated the save error or save game error notification included a new pc min specs warning and had made stability improvements <sighs> improve the quality of voip could technically maybe be considered social features but if that's what they're saying that this is not a good luck because need for speed heats major first update the 1.04 update was deployed and here's what that included holiday items quick routing speed walls environment which fix night race intros pull star hero edition multiple ui fixes again some other fixes when it comes to cop spawn mechanics and online play fixed many missions fixed many events continued to fix a lot of ui fixed some issues with cars fixed a lot of visuals fixed a lot of performance and fixed some additional other things take a look at the like all of this here it is amazing what they did it was a 2.4 gigabyte update on pc well, the major update here was under a gig, if that. Of course, we're not going to describe the fact that more size of files means that there is more done. It's just the, the absolute amount of things that were changed. Keep in mind, December 12th, 2019, less than a month. I don't think Criterion's keeping up on their promises anymore. Because, like, with this scope of these these this update here is more in line with the 1.03 again i think this is yeah this is probably closer to what we got with heat so honestly in my mind we're probably about a an update behind i imagine that next update is going to look like heat's 1.04 and if it's not i am i might just call it quits entirely I just, I can't keep making excuses for them anymore. This is, this is absolutely pathetic in my mind. So, like I said, I just can't keep making excuses for Criterion anymore because there's a huge amount of things that need, need to fix. I can only get into lobbies with like a handful maximum. Like the, the first race that you guys saw where there's four or, or maybe even five other people, that is rare. Like, we're currently sitting in a lobby with what was two other people, and one other person realized that the lobby wasn't going to get any bigger, so they just dropped. So, this is two months after launch, and it already feels like a ghost town. It's just... The fun isn't there. I think at the end of the day, that's the thing that I'm really struggling with, is that Need for Speed Heat, because I was able to get a lot of my friends into it, and it had a thriving online environment with 32 people servers and you know lobbies with you could have like eight player races those were awesome because at the very worst like the least amount of people you could get into a single race would have been like four people and that seems to be the maximum in this game where it's on an online environment and you just send out an invite to anybody and everybody you might get four people on a good day. I wish I could do some investigative journalism and find out where it went wrong, but I think we already know is that the game didn't market itself on release and the game just isn't fun. I don't know how else to describe it. Is The handling makes it difficult. 
the grinding of trying to get all the cars it's your the top tier races in S plus you only get 22k I think for I can't remember if it's a whole set of three races I think it's actually per race so it's you're only getting about 60k out of being in an online lobby or somebody else but with the amount of invitations that you sometimes have to send out to actually get people into your lobby the amount of time and energy that you're spending in this game to have a subpar experience is tragic because there are a lot of other games a set of Corsa, i believe is averaging like six thousand people daily and that game is years old i mean don't even get me started with iRacing. it's probably in the 20 to 30 thousand range easily knowing i racing and then yeah i just even heat the game previous to this has a better more fruitful online environment than this it's it's, it's just thriving in my mind with the same amount of players so think about that is how many players are in unbound doing their own thing when they could be racing together in literally any other game and it's just i think that's the struggle with racing games in 2023 is how grindy some of them are to get even the basic amount of stuff done and if it isn't grinding it's just blatant microtransactions so for those who subscribe to my channel looking for a bunch of need for speed unbound content i think i gave you guys everything that i can uh, i'm surprised i don't feel more inspired to continue playing this game but the next time i can imagine playing this game and making a video about it is when we hear about the potential update in March. And it's not even an update that's in March. It's news of an update in March. And yeah, I just, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Where they can at least tell us, hey, things aren't going as well as planned during development. We might need a little bit of time. You know, thanks for your patience. Whomever. And that would bring us so much joy because then it feels like that they're communicating with us. Instead, we get a tweet from EA, specifically, you know, the Need for Speed Twitter, saying, here's a, what they call a large update that is basically a week one patch. You'll hear from us in March. Have fun. And they turn off the comments and they go off on their way. And it's like, I don't understand how their marketing strategy and their, it's just, it's so obvious that EA doesn't give a shit. It's just, it's so blatantly obvious. And at this point in time, controversial statement time, everybody. At this rate, EA is doing everything that they can to kill off all sorts of racing game franchises and i hope to god i actually hope i can't believe i'm saying this i hope that unbound is the last need for speed game potentially ever because need for speed has an insane history of incredible arcade racing games that I've actually gone back to and I've started emulating. I've started playing through them once again. And I don't know if it's the nostalgic rose tinted glasses that I'm looking through. Or if it's just that they genuinely are different in the way that they are a blast to play. I don't think Need for Speed should continue in its current form. There, we asked for this from Heat that we wish that the next Need for Speed game is a fundamental change in everything. And two months in, it's same shit. Same shit, different day. And 
I don't think I'm going to be buying another Need for Speed game until a month or two in where I see that there's a lot of live services being supported, that it's got a thriving online environment, that it's got a community that just absolutely adores it. Because the community right now in my mind is silent. It's as silent as it was waiting for Unbound. Where, yeah, you'll get posts of people talking about, you know, screenshots of previous games or talking about bugs that they're having in the current past couple of games. And then just a lot of posts of what I wish. So we're, we're back to that already. So I am severely disappointed and I hope that I, this wasn't another rant video, but I am to the point that I'm probably going to skip out on Need for Speed Unbound content for a while. So I do apologize greatly for that, for those wanting to have more of it. I just can't keep doing it. So thank you all for watching. If you somehow enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a lot more racing game content that isn't Need for Speed Unbound coming in the future. Again, we might make another video regarding Unbound... If we get an update in May at this point, but I can't imagine it's going to be that big of an update. And if it is, it's definitely going to need talking about. So stay tuned for that. Maybe uh, until then, I've got a couple of product reviews coming and I've got some more Gran Turismo coming. So at that point, uh, we'll see what I come up with in the next couple of weeks because it's definitely going to be a huge change for the channel. So again, thanks so much for staying on this far into the video again thanks so much for everything guys i hope you guys have a great day today take care bye